Hi, I'm Marla. Stay right here. There's lots more on the way. You've heard the phrase, happy as a clam. It may not have originated on the eastern shore of Virginia, but it could have. Virginia's eastern shore is a 75-mile-long peninsula between the Atlantic Ocean and the Chesapeake Bay, midway up the Atlantic coast. It is an ideal place for the production of aquaculture clams. The moderate climate is tempered by the Gulf Stream in the winter and by the bay and ocean in the summer. This ensures a year-round harvest where clam quality is not affected by extreme temperature swings. Here on the tip of this peninsula that includes three states, clams are king. Their pampered lifestyle begins at Virginia's premier clam growing operation, Cherrystone Aqua Farms in Cheriton, and ends in restaurants or on the tables of millions of people throughout the United States. The seafood and agricultural industries have dominated the economy of the Eastern Shore for more than 400 years, and both still play a vital role in the area's economy. When it comes to seafood, few, if any, companies have a longer history than the Ballard Fish and Oyster Company, which has operated continuously since 1895. In 1983, the Ballards founded Cherrystone Aqua Farms, and since that time, they have become the world's largest producer of little neck clams, producing between 65 to 100 million of these tasty shellfish annually. It takes two to three years to grow a clam to market size, and the process begins in the hatchery, slightly ahead of the spawning process. Here employees inoculate large containers of pasteurized seawater with algae strains that are ideal food for young clams. During the nursery process, which lasts eight weeks, Cherrystone uses more than 6,000 gallons of algae daily to sustain the several hundred million larval and juvenile clams. Once the food production process is underway, the spawning process begins. Cherrystone selects brood stock clams that will grow rapidly and conditions them to spawn by gradually bringing the water temperature of their environment to 66 degrees Fahrenheit, the ideal environment for spawning. Female clams release their eggs for fertilization and then Cherrystone places the fertilized eggs in large tanks. For 10 days, the larvae ingest the algae-enriched seawater, and at the end of this period, they are recognizable as clams. After the clams reach a size of 130 microns, they move to new quarters. In these smaller containers, the final indoor stage at the hatchery, they continue to eat algae-enriched seawater in preparation for their move outdoors. The clam's first outdoor home is the upwellers outside the building. Here the juvenile clams receive a constant supply of natural seawater with no pasteurization or algae enrichment. This is the last process on land and it prepares the young clams for habituation to their next home in the shallow waters near the Cherry Stone facility. Employees move the young clams to sand filled trays, place the trays in shallow waters and let them grow for 10 to 12 weeks. At the end of this time, Cherrystone harvests the trays and runs them through a four-stage sieve to remove the sand and size the seed. They save the sand to use with another batch and then plant the sized seed clams in beds maintained by Cherrystone or one of the 16 clam growing co-ops that works with them. Employees plant seed stock using these frames to ensure the correct size of bed and distribution of seed. After the seed are planted, crews cover them with a net to protect the clams from predators such as crabs and bullfish. The young clams remain in these seabeds for 18 to 30 months until they reach maturity and are ready for harvesting. Crews harvest the clams with specially designed rakes and wash each bucketful before loading on the skiff for transport back to the facility. With multiple locations around the eastern shore coastline, Cherrystone is able to minimize the effects of harsh weather and extreme tides to ensure a consistent harvest year-round. When the clams arrive at Cherrystone's state-of-the-art cooling and packing facility, everybody shifts into high gear. 
It's a sensitive process that balances giving the clams time to acclimate to a new environment while still getting them out the door within a day or two of harvest. After cooling, Cherry Stone runs the clams through a pre-sizer to determine which of four sizes they fall into, buttons, little neck, middle neck, and great neck. After cooling and pre-sizing, the clams go into the packing room. Here a second sizing ensures an even higher degree of accuracy. Crews visually inspect the clams, count them electronically, and package them into the various containers that customers request. In addition to packing under their own label, Cherry Stone also packs under private labels for a variety of customers. From the packing room, the clams go immediately into the coolers to await shipment. This room maintains a constant temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure freshness. In most cases, the clams ship within 24 hours of harvest. This is all part of Cherry Stone's commitment to food safety and the highest quality product possible. They ship clams all over the United States using both surface and air freight. Since Cherry Stone is within a day's drive of two-thirds of the population of the United States, customers are assured of the freshest clams on the planet. In addition to growing their clams in some of the most pristine waters on the East Coast, Cherry Stone's state-of-the-art facility meets the most stringent food safety requirements. Their HACCP-based program is evaluated regularly by the Virginia Shellfish Sanitation Agency to ensure the safest product possible. It's something that people can feel good about that they're, they're, they're using a product that's sustainable and is, and is good for the environment. While Cherry Stone is proud of its process and products, it is most proud of its people. Whether they are developing a market for farm-raised East Coast oysters, or working with customers on innovative ways to increase the business, their people make the difference. If you are interested in establishing a relationship with a supplier who offers top-notch products, year-round availability, multiple transportation options, and a fair price, Cherry Stone can fill the bill. If you want more information or a tour of the operation, call them directly, visit their website, or contact them through the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Experience the early days of aviation when men were made of steel and planes were made of wood. Fly on Cloud Dance or a two-passenger biplane in an open cockpit adventure with the wind at your face and see the beautiful beaches of Ocean City and Assateague Island. The three-passenger enclosed Cessna airplane tours take you through the scenic beaches for a thrill of a lifetime with your family or friends. Come to the gazebo at Ocean City Airport or call us for an experience you won't soon forget. Just moments from Ocean City, Maryland's Beach and Boardwalk and Assateague Island National Seashore is the vibrant town of Berlin, Maryland. Nestled between U.S. Route 50 and U.S. Route 113, this Victorian village lets you enjoy life at a slower pace without giving up modern day shopping, dining and gallery experiences. As a nationally recognized Maryland Main Street community and a Maryland Arts and Entertainment District, Berlin is constantly adding to the already existing ambiance. The boutiques and shops in Berlin offer a unique shopping experience for both young and old. Clothing, jewelry, antiques, hip, trendy. Berlin houses several working galleries. Nationally recognized artists can be found on many streets. Local artists. Second Friday Art Stroll, Maryland Arts and Entertainment District. Enjoy casual to fine dining throughout Berlin. Fresh local ingredients are what makes the difference here. Coffee House, Bakery, Sunday Brunch, Fine Dining, Luncheonette. Berlin's historic side is charming. Renovated storefronts and homes will make your visit a memorable experience. Bed and Breakfast. Taylor House Museum, Atlantic Hotel, Walking Tour. The events in Berlin are never ending. Annual events, check us out. Fiddler's Convention, Peach Festival, Spring Celebration, Jazz and Blues Bash, Holiday Arts Night, 
the location of Paramount Pictures' Runaway Bride and Walt Disney's Tuck Everlasting just add to the allure of what Berlin, Maryland has to offer. Check out our website and make your plans to visit us soon. The number one place to be for high-energy, adrenaline-packed fun for everyone is OC Paintball. OC Paintball, featuring two new outdoor lighted fields, extreme nighttime games for totally awesome family fun. Single players and groups of all sizes are always welcome. Enjoy this fast-paced, team-oriented sport. No matter what the occasion, we have your extreme fun right here. Never played before? Mention this ad and we'll give you five bucks off to try it. It's back, OC Paintball. Let the games begin. My great-grandfather lived on Ayers Creek and he depended on Ayers Creek for his living. He, in the summertime, used a gill net to catch fish and then he would take them home and salt them down for storage for the season. And in the spring and the fall would harvest trees to sell to a local lumberyard. And in the winter he would hunt deer and ducks and geese and sometimes, uh, you know, they had to take advantage of what was available and so they might trap muskrat or uh, raccoon or whatever they could find. They were opportunistic and so he really survived off of uh, what Ayers Creek and the uh, surrounding area had to offer. And now my wife and I are doing that in a very different way through our kayak adventure business where we take people out and educate them about the natural environment and share with them the stories about my great-grandfather. And then uh, my father, when he was growing up as a boy on Ayers Creek, would, uh, there used to be, a, where the Ayers Creek Bridge is today, there used to be a one-lane wooden bridge there. And he told me that when he was a boy, it was a uh, big excitement to have one car come by a day. And he and his little cousin would uh, hear the car coming and run to a, an area where they could see the bridge. So that was their excitement for the day. Of course, now, hundreds of cars cross Ayers Creek every day. Ayers Creek has changed a lot uh, based on what my grandfather tells me. He says that it used to be very narrow and very deep. And now the creek is much wider and much shallower than it used to be. And there are even stories in the community where sailing ships used to sail up to Ayers Creek Bridge to bring in goods for the community. And of course, that's just not possible today, as shallow as it is. I think that there was a time when there was a lot less wildlife on Ayers Creek. And that was probably in the, in the 50s and 60s when there was a lot more agriculture activity and there was more of an impact on wildlife. And so now I think we're seeing a rebound in terms of the birds that we see, the uh, number of fish that we see in the creek. And so I think that Ayers Creek is getting healthier than it was back in the 60s. I think Ayers Creek is recovering because there's been a lot of effort on uh, water quality issues, habitat recovery kinds of projects and just more attention drawn to the environment. Ayers Creek is very serene. Uh, it's very protected from the wind. Uh, it's a very calm waterway. We don't have a lot of waves and so it's a very peaceful kind of setting. We see a lot of different types of birds, a lot of wildlife in general and so it's a very relaxing kind of atmosphere and I think people really enjoy that part of it. This year, over 100 local students are attending college because of scholarship funds from the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. My scholarship is allowing me to pursue a degree and future career in exercise science. Thanks to my scholarship from the Community Foundation, I'm studying to be a physician. A scholarship fund can memorialize a loved one or as an opportunity to create a personal legacy. To learn how easy it is to start a scholarship fund at the Community Foundation, visit CFES.org or call 410-742-9911. Hi, I'm Bobby Vermillion, co-host of Raven's Rap, seen right here on Beach Television Network every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday.